Right. Welcome everybody. We're just gonna give folks about 30 seconds to join and then we'll get going. Let me share my screen. It's thinking about it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, welcome everybody. Uh, this is 20 Minute Tales from the front lines of finance. Uh, today we're going to focus on high impact finance teams. Just a couple of things before we get started. Um, I'd like to invite you all to come to our Path to Becoming a CFO series, which is an interview series all about how to grow your career. Um, this month we're excited because we have the former CFO of Oracle and Nielsen. Um, he's a current uh, operating partner at Bessemer Ventures. His name is Jeff Epstein, and I'll drop uh, that registration link in the chat for you in just a minute. Um, and if you're not already, we'd love for you to join our finance and accounting Slack group. It's called Off the Ledger. This is a private community just meant for finance professionals, a place to talk shop, share resources, find a new job, whatever you want. Um, so I'll drop that link in the chat for you as well. Um, and I will say, uh, if you're interested, the recording of this session will be available on Monday. Um, I'll give you that link so you can watch it again, download it, share it with your friends uh, if you want. Um, and we will be taking questions at the end of the session. So at any point, if you have a question, um, at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you'll see a little Q&A button. Go ahead, click that and ask away. We'll get to as many as we can at the end. Um, but first, I'd like to uh, introduce Darcy, who's going to be leading us through this chat with uh, Pedro. So hey, Darcy. Hi, thanks, Laura, and um, welcome, Pedro, and welcome to everyone uh, here. Uh, the um, Pedro is uh, joining us from Portugal, where I'm so jealous that he gets to be there. Um, he's a VP of finance at Remote uh, and started his career in investment banking and strategy uh, in the technology and media telecommunications sector. Um, and uh, Pedro comes to us with a really interesting perspective, which is very much um, working on focusing on high growth tech companies. Uh, so he was head of finance at uh, Codacy and now he's VP finance at Remote. And we can all just imagine how an HR tech company uh, solving global organizations challenge of remote workforce is uh, booming like crazy. So um, let me just, let's go, maybe just go to, yeah, live. Um, and so I want to start there, Pedro, uh, and just let's talk a little bit about your background since it really is relevant to how you're approaching your current role. So let's start there. Hey everyone. Thanks, uh, Darcy, and thanks, Laura. Uh, so I'm an engineer by formation. So <laughs> the way I always approach things, it's uh, with a very open and creative mindset, but also very rooted on what's real and what's possible. Um, I obviously, as you mentioned, spent several years in investment banking, so understanding market dynamics, different companies, impact of investments, and, uh, and also internal strategy at NBC Universal, which was uh, amazing in terms of understanding new product launches and large scale uh, corporate development uh, in the billions. So clearly a challenge that, uh, that helped me where I am today in terms of resources allocation, and how can we best uh, best allocate uh, in, not only investment, but the scarce time and folks that we have in our teams. Um, over the last five years or so has been much more entrepreneurial. I helped set up a VC fund um, when I came back to Portugal in 2016 uh, from London. And, uh, and since then, I, I have always been focusing in early stage companies. I understood how I could help them go faster and really understand the challenges they were facing on the finance side, which usually is a bit underlooked, especially at the beginning, but can have a really high impact and can really drive business and understanding in how we how we move forward uh, with the business. Um, I and then one year or so ago, I joined Remote. <laughs> so right at the beginning of uh, of. Uh, the, 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 the pandemic, the very unfortunate situation we are all in, but uh, uh, we are trying to, to help uh, in that aspect by enabling global employment and folks to work uh, from anywhere. 
Yeah, so, um, okay, so this is great. We've had, like you've seen some breadth of uh, different types of companies. You've, you've seen them from sort of the investment banking side where you're being more analytical about them and then also boots on the ground operating side. So that's a really helpful, great perspective to have. Um, so let's talk a little bit about remote. Um, yeah, amazing. Uh, I imagine the pace of growth there is incredible. Um, why don't you take us through your current role uh, and then sort of the size of the team that you have that you're working with? Yeah, so uh, as you said, like remote, it's, it's in a hyper growth. We, we are solving a critical challenge of enabling companies to, to scale globally. Uh, today we are solving global employment and breaking the barriers of you being able to employ anyone anywhere. We are present in over 40 countries with 40 new countries uh, to be added until the end of the year. And uh, obviously this requires very strong expertise in the team, in my team. We are a team of seven and three of them are directors. And I have uh, a shared service center uh, globally based out of the Netherlands with Ernst & Young to really enable all the transactional side and the specific country, country operations. So... It's yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, it, I was going to say it's a bit of an uncommon uh, to have uh, such a large shared service center from early on, but we understood that uh, if we're going to tackle a global global compliance and having a global presence in the very near future, we we had to have the infrastructure in place to be able to address it and to be able to 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 really enable our customers to employ. Uh, legally and compliantly and uh, in the different countries that we are present. So the primary product then that you provide is this um, how to hire and maintain local uh, staff um, and to follow all the tax and legal um, obligations. Exactly. exactly. So we help uh, the companies to hire uh, folks in different countries. We do what we call the employer of record where we hire the employee locally on behalf of, of the customer and really enable uh, all, the, all the compliance that is required in the country. On top of that, we are also launching global payroll and many more products that then can be leveraged on top of our infrastructure, but always focused on scaling, uh, enabling companies to scale globally yeah. and breaking the barriers of, of global employment. Okay. Um, well, if we have time at the end, I really want to know a little bit about the uh, global payroll thing, because it's interesting about how, as it sounds like a big old multi-currency problem you've got there too. Um, so, uh, all right, well, let's talk a little bit about the types of challenges you're trying to solve for. I mean, you, as you know, as you start to build this finance function from a very, very um, startup environment. Yeah. So from very early since I like since I joined, we were we just had a handful of companies uh, across the globe, but uh, compliance and the mindset of global compliance had to be it was paramount and it was a critical point that uh, I wanted to make sure that we had properly nailed up, especially when we are responsible for employing folks. Uh, it's our duty and uh, to really ensure that uh, our entities are fully compliant and uh, and can operate uh, well in the country so that we don't put anyone's employment at risk. And, uh, and for that, it's uh, when I decided to do what potentially at the time were large scale investments and uh, maybe some investments that you don't exactly see at the seed stage company of bringing uh, one of the largest ERPs in the world of engaging a shared service center and then starting on, on the route of hiring uh, several very experienced directors which had teams of 60 plus people in their previous firms to really have uh, to really establish this function. In the end, it's, it, it drives the business because it's, it's, center, uh, it's center stage of what we do. And we really need to potentiate our global operations by ensuring that we are fully compliant, our entities are top notch, not, nothing is failing. And, uh, and with that, also start enabling new product development because enabling global scaling of companies and especially on the Dejar and the employer of record and payroll side 
it's very related with finance. So there is always this, uh, how we are positioned in the, in the decisions and new products that is super exciting. So when you talk about investing in a, in a fairly complex ERP, um, you're talking about making sure you're getting the functionality that can um, to, to manage a kind of a global type of an operation. Exactly, right? managing small. a global operation uh, and uh, with full automation as much as possible and with a system that is compliant in, in the countries, but that allows me to, to centralize everything uh, in an efficient manner. So I had to have visibility across the globe. Uh, 80, 80, 80 countries by the end of the year means potentially 90 entities uh, in total. And, uh, and it's critical that we have full visibility into the business and we work quite well with local uh, tax authorities to ensure full compliance. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, and all of that has to flow through your ERP, right? <laughs> yeah, and our, and our treasury, uh, we're also implementing a treasury management system on the side, given what you mentioned before on the complexity of, of multi-currencies. We pay local currency, uh, we invoice in G10 currencies, so uh, currency currencies and uh, FX is, is, is core, the, like, I hired the director of treasury right at the, at, the, at the beginning because the challenges were were there and I knew that they were coming. So it was uh, yeah. one, a very very good decision to do that. So let's let's talk because this is you know so you took this kind of look we got to go big <laughs> from the beginning right which is not a typical approach. <laughs> as you for stage You're going to build this you know massive very complex operation from the start. Um, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about, um, th there are two things that are of interest to me. One is, um, uh, where did you choose to put those investments? You talked about the ERP, so I'd be kind of, let's go through, in, you know, what you invested in, what kind of people you needed, and then the, you know, the role that finance ends up playing within the company. But we'll go through each of those, but what I'd love to hear are um, any times, any of these things that you did, for example, that, that you did this because of the nature of the company, but are there, it's, would you in another company setting just kind of say, look, just scale, just build for scale from the beginning kind of thing. So that's sort of, as you kind of go through these comments, I'd love to hear th that perspective. Trying to be, jump to the end, but then I'll come back to the beginning. Uh, different companies have different challenges. And as a, as a financier and being really close to the CEO and to the management and board, it's, it's critical that you understand what are those challenges. If it's much more operational and making sure that you can execute on the investment that, that you have decided as a firm to do, which sometimes end up being very operational, very analytical, as, 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 you, as you mentioned before. And uh, so in my previous firm, I was doing that, enabling sales and operations and uh, very close to, to the business on that side, marketing as well. Um, but the challenge here was very different. And we had to face the challenge of establishing uh, a global operation. We knew, we, maybe we didn't know at the time that it was 80 countries, but we knew it was going to be global in one or two years time. And we had to make the decisions that would put us well in a good position to be able to be compliant and, uh, and efficient working at that scale. It required as, as, as it like early, early decisions to, to go with a multi-million dollar investment on a shared service center in a multi-million dollar investment on an ERP. And uh, but it was the things that we identified as a business uh, that were paramount to, the, to our success. And they were core and central to the success of, 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 of remote. It, this does not mean that every company needs to jump like all the smaller softwares and the, the tools to automate and billing, et cetera, and go full scale with the largest ERP in the world. and having a team in the Shared Service Center present in 160 countries. Far from that, but the challenge that we were faced was that, and I think the, the mindset of high impact and, and especially also velocities, how can you build to address the, the critical challenge that, we, that you have? In one, in one case was okay, it was fast growth and we had to make it happen and execute on the investments that were decided. And here was 
that but at a very different scale because we wanted to be global so the mindset had to be global we cannot we could not go with piecemeal softwares we could not go with localized teams because it would not scale uh, efficiently so okay this is really interesting the um so let's talk a little bit about the things other things that you did invest in in terms of the the types of systems and the types of people uh that you were bringing in so systems we we are implementing sap uh, so s for hana on the clouds to to our global footprint we may have to to go in a different uh, route but that was that is mainly what we are using and uh, and now we're implementing as a treasury management system kiriba so also very capable and very enterprise ready type of of treasury management system uh, so very mature solutions that obviously require a lot of investment, not only cash wise, but also in terms of resources and uh, and allocation of, of time and uh, from the team. But more important than that was is the team that is being built. Look, we were super lucky to have uh, very senior folks like leaving very exciting jobs at uh, Uber, Expedia, PwCs, etc to face the challenge of, of, of enabling remote and enabling global employment and uh, working towards our mission. Mm -hmm. And these are folks that are super independent with the ownership capacity, which is impressive. And they had impact from, from day zero they join. And this high impact, it's, it's what is driving the success of this team. Because at this scale, like, I don't know it all. And they are super like subject matter experts in in their fields and they are driving the business super fast in in in, in that in that aspect and uh, like controlling like it's it's super mature how we are doing uh, all their counting and controlling at group level uh, the same as treasury i mentioned and now more recently we had the director of tax joining and uh, what we are solving and how we are solve solving you see at uh, at very large firms and not at, uh, at our scale but these folks were critical to the success of everything that we do and even to the success of the systems that we are implementing so would you say that their um ex the was the experience that they the value of their experience did it come from the fact that they played on bigger stages and so they knew what scale looked like or would you say it's because they had been part of startups and they went through the scaling process? Uh, mostly having worked at scale, but yeah. having that understanding of uh, what is uh, high growth or hyper growth in some of their cases. Uh, but, uh, and these were super hard uh, roles to hire for because you want these highly strategic folks like with a very high capacity of have, of driving impact and the strategic direction of the firm. But it's not like you have a, an infinite team, so they had to be super operational. So balancing both and seeing this happening in reality where you have someone which is super expert can drive things forward, but they are like, they roll up their sleeves and they're doing the work. It's it's super exciting working with, with teams like this. Yeah. Um, so the role, it sounds, you mentioned earlier that the role of the, the finance group ends up being a core. Can you talk a little bit about that, about how it becomes a, a driver and has real impact within the That's company? That's something that really excites me at Remote and from the beginning, uh, because every, or a lot of the challenges that we are solving are, are traditional or have been very close to, to finance, like HR, payroll, compliance, risk, very, very connected with, with finance. So our awareness for the challenges, for what our customers are facing, for the products that we need to implement to, to drive their success, it's, it's very <laughs> built into our minds and how we work and what we are used to see. So you have everyone in the team involved in product teams, uh, contributing, driving new implementations, driving new initiatives. And, uh, and they take center stage in, in a lot of what is being done and implemented at remote. So it's an experience that it's rare to see where it's so, so core to what we are developing. That just makes everything even more exciting because just the other side was already crazy enough. Like this, just being able to do this is impressive. Yeah. Well, and you talk about this con concept of velocity.
generosity and you talk about the the idea of um you know how how do you work with teams to think in terms of velocity look we had to hire folks that were ready to as i mentioned roll out their sleeves but also have an understanding of the goal and uh, be able to achieve and go there in very very quickly but independently and i think this independence and letting folks bring their expertise to drive the business and drive uh, their departments forward and not having to be dictated by constant strategic meetings or directions but so this independence is really enabling their velocity and it's enabling the finance team to move faster and faster even it, as it gets bigger we're just going faster but it all stemmed from this independence and having folks that they knew what they were going to do, but we also let them do what they knew what to do. And uh, I think that was critical. Yeah, there's a level of trust there. But you know that, yeah, it gets it. Okay, I don't want to sidestep into remote work, which is fascinating though. Um, so this is a fairly radical approach for, for finance uh, in, a, in a startup environment to sort of say, we're going to build, uh, we're going to scale our finance function from day one. Uh, and it's going to be this uh, kind of an enterprise level ca capability. What was it a difficult thing for you internally to make that case? Uh, and if so, how did you how did you make the case internally? Like, look, if we're going to succeed, we, we need this. There was the fundamental understanding in the firm that uh, our business is compliance, and it's very related to compliance. So there was always uh, a lot of willingness and openness to invest in these areas and again the way that uh, our leadership is driving velocity in the business is also allowing us to have full ownership and independence in the way that we move forward with with our initiatives in each one of the departments obviously you're not you're not alone and it's a it's a actually very a very close team but uh, but uh, from the moment that I understood the scale of, of the challenge that we we're facing uh, and also uh, knew the solutions, it was presented, but uh, it was challenged in terms of how can we go faster, like you're 100% sure, cool. But it was assumed that I did all my homework, I did the best that I could do. I checked with the best folks in the market to be able to, to, to cross check my ideas and understand if this was the direction. And, uh, and with all that and all those that material in place, it was very easy for the leadership also to give the thumbs up and say, let's go and let's continue to invest on that. Okay, so what I love about this tale is it sounds like, okay, from the beginning, you guys saw what needed to be done and then you went about and executed it and the execution worked. Um, all sounds amazing and very cool. Uh, what, would you have, what mistakes did you make? What would you have done differently? bring full, more expertise uh, earlier on so mm -hmm. i was for six or seven months with uh, no senior membership in my team and i would have uh, i should have uh, hired much earlier um which would have unblocked many other things uh, much faster and uh, that was that is the critical learning and uh, what i try to pass also to the teams now is hire early and hire fast and dedicate a lot of your time to that because that's how you scale yourself and that's how you scale the firm and have, that's how we bring more velocity and more impact to the organization. Hmm, okay. Um, well, I have more questions, but I'm, we're running out of time. So I'm gonna open it up to see if there's anybody in the audience that has questions uh, and um, let them ask some before I... Yeah, so just a reminder, use the Q&A portal at the bottom of your screen. And just really quickly, uh, we are Airbase. We are a spend management platform. If you want to um, set yourself up to scale, have bill payments, corporate cards, reimbursements, all in one place. We'd love to show you a little bit more. This is just a quick poll. If you want to hear more, uh, we'll reach out. If not, no worries. Um, but yeah, uh, also feel free to submit any questions that you have. And I'll throw it back to you, Darcy. <laughs> that was time for our commercial break. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah. So, in in addition to understanding the the challenge, like when you first looked at the company, what kind of advice would you give to other finance heads about how to go about assessing, you know, what are the real needs of this particular company, 
And then how do I, you know, build both the case for that and, uh, and it's, it's the initial groundwork, it sounds to me like, of being able to identify what this company is going to need um, from its finance team. Look, I think, I think you need to, one critical part is understanding resources, understanding if investments have been decided or you are still at the stage that you are going to enable deciding those investments and really be a part of enabling, enabling the operationalization of, of those investments. Finance has a full picture of the firm. It's a super privileged position to be in. Uh, you know everyone, you know all the numbers, you have access to all the information in the firm. So it's one of the most critical positions to really ensure the success of every initiative that happens in the firm. From establishing entities like we're doing and global compliance, to marketing and sales. And no one better than finance to really help the organization have full visibility and make the best decisions. Yeah, I hear that consistently, um, especially on our uh, path to becoming CFO when we get our, our CFOs talking. We have a question. Thank you, Maddie. Um, so what are the unique challenges of having very senior a very senior team? There are, there are not many because <laughs> Uh, from the moment that they join, they understand exactly their, their role. Uh, they understand uh, there is a full trust in them. So when I hire them, there is already an inbuilt trust in, in the folks that we are. But uh, it's continuously ensured that uh, they drive forward, that uh, they continuously hire and scale themselves. And they don't get bogged down into just operational work that is massive. But... Um, hiring the chance of hiring uh, seniors it's it's uh, i have very limited drawbacks at this stage hmm, okay um so uh all right well does any do we have any other question we were talking about earlier how on zoom calls people in person we always get so many questions from people and then on zoom calls we seem to not get many but if anyone has any questions for pedro now is your chance to uh to ask um but I think if absent that from the group, I'm gonna ask one more question. What do you see as the like next steps? What's the, what is, what's the future hold? Is it just more of the same or do you have big projects that you really want to uh, confront? I guess there's this multi-currency thing going on. You've got to do uh, Multi-currency, it's an existing project. So that's being already tackled, uh, intercompany flows that's, that's being tackled. For us, uh, it's how we can leverage our infrastructure to further enable the employees that we have across the globe with, uh, with solutions for them. How can we further enable our customers uh, leveraging our infrastructure? We, we work a lot on the payments and we work a lot on, uh, on compliance. So, but we are present globally. So how can finance really enable the product side of the, of the company and the operations? to bring more to our customers and to really solve their problems. And, uh, and where we are positioned, these are immense. So the world, like it, it, this, this is just the beginning, like employment and uh, there's much more to come. Yeah, no, I, I see. Oh, we've got uh, another couple questions here in the very last minute. Um, uh, how, how do you approach in-house or outsourcing decisions about roles on your team? So we started by, as, as you've heard, outsourcing a lot and uh, because we had the requirement of velocity and so we, we didn't have the capacity of growing the team that fast or bringing that expertise that fast. So we hired a very expert team for and build a shared service center with them. Now that we have more expertise, we are starting to, to insource a lot of the strategic roles. And some like initially starting on the like the quick wins like roles that we we know we can bring and have a high impact in terms of velocity culture, and uh, and ROI. Right, that makes sense. Um, so how there's another one here. How did you partner with HR to establish an effective hiring plan as the lead finance in a high growth startup? So if it was high growth, I would, uh, we, it would have been budgeted uh, very swiftly with, with HR and we would work very closely on that and trying to balance between teams' budget. Uh, at remote, we were in hyper growth, so it was a very different uh, mindset. We had an overall, uh, overall uh, budget that we had and mostly driven by, by Yob, our CEO, and, uh, and we just uh, drove 
hiring very, very, very fast and uh, not with the minutiae planning that you usually see at, at this stage that helps like companies with limited resources and all that stuff. Right. Um, okay, we have one more, we made it in. Uh, what third party advisors are you leveraging to help grow your team and infrastructure? So we work with many global law firms uh, and uh, secretarial services companies like uh, ITG and Baker McKinsey and uh, folks like that. And on the finance side, we work very closely with Ernst & Young, a uh, team in the Netherlands that specializes in CFO advisory and uh, has been working extremely well for us. Uh, so very happy with, with the decision of, of having gone with them. So Pedro, we're out of time, but this has been such a fun conversation. Really interesting. It's so much fun to see somebody taking such a radically different approach to, okay, we're gonna build this way and uh, to see it actually um, work. Um, maybe we can check in with you again in like a year to see how it's going. Um, oh, it's <laughs> panning out. I agree, Darcy. It was great, uh, the conversation. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. And thank you guys for your questions. You're awesome. Appreciate it. Bye. Perfect.